It feels good. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to meet people. I like to go to new places. I feel like a big part of my work is um, building community, and I think that's true of not only um, within Canada, but I think like you know internationally. I think it's really important, and and I love just being in front of people, and so, and I feel like when you when you when you meet new people um, and you get to know them, what you realize is that there aren't there aren't many things that separate us really, and I I, I, I like that about you know wherever I go, um, whether you know earlier this year I went to Hong Kong or um, going to California or Vancouver or you know Winnipeg or Germany, um, you you notice like you know cultural differences and you notice like little things. Um, that um, aren't the same as where you are from, but you, you also notice that people are just people. And I feel like that's a, a really important thing to recognize, is just like we have this shared humanity, and, and that human condition is something that we share and that brings us together. And I think like that's the starting point. I mean, when I was a kid, it was I wanted to write. And when I was when I was a young kid, but I grew up really disconnected from culture, so mm -hmm. I you know, that wasn't really anywhere on my radar when I was younger. I just liked writing stuff, and it was just silly stuff that I was writing when I was younger. And um, but when I was really starting to actively try to get my work out there and and to get published, it I really did have a, a an intention behind the work to educate people. And you know, I, I wrote my first few books, and really every book since then, thinking first and foremost, what can somebody learn from the story? And you know, it, so I, I want to think of good stories to tell. But for me, the litmus test is to is to ask myself, if this is a good story, what can that story offer to somebody else? And if it can't really offer anything other than being an entertainment, um, then I don't write it, because I. I mean, when I started out, I, I wanted my books to be used in schools. I wanted them to, use, to be used in the classroom. I wanted them to be on library shelves. Um, and and if, I, if they didn't do well outside of schools, I didn't really care. Like, I just wanted them to be in classrooms. And, and that's where it started out. You know, a lot, my books were used in a lot of classrooms across Canada. And, um, and I've just been lucky enough um, in my career to be able to reach a wider audience. But it was always looking at you know, the things that I didn't have when I was younger. Like, you know, I never got to read books like by Indigenous writers about Indigenous people um, when I was younger. And I just wanted, I didn't want that to happen anymore. And so I wanted to take a lot of the genres and forms of literature that I work in now, um, it's genres and forms of literature that really um, were poor when I was younger in terms of how they represented Indigenous people. So I wanted to correct that. And um, and so yeah, I think that like with my work, it's always been I wanted to I wanted to help people learn, and through that help people build you know um, good communities. And my dad had this saying um, when he was alive um, that really stuck with me, and it was just talking about how you know the, the the capacity of somebody to do something positive in their community. And the saying is just talking about how even though you're one person you can still, you're still one person who has the capacity to do something. Yeah, yeah, my mom was always really supportive. You know, I came home when I was eight years old. I told my mom I wanted to be a writer. She didn't really flinch. She just, you know, she was like, okay, that's what you're going to be, you know, so she was great. And she's always been a really uh, big supporter of what I wanted to do. I've, I've wanted to be a writer since I was in grade three. Never wanted to be anything else. And she's been there, you know, every single event I've ever had that she's been able to go to, she's mm -hmm. gone to. And, um, and that's, so she's, been, she's always been there. My family has been really great um, in supporting me in what I've been doing. You know, when I go away f to travel, um, my wife has, I think, some good supports to look after the kids. and. And she works for really. She works harder than I do, you know. Um, and uh, 
And so that, that's been really important for me in the work that I do. And my dad, you know, uh, even though my mom and my dad were separated when I was younger, um, my dad, when he came back into our lives um, permanently, like when we were in high school, um, he became like a, a really important figure in my life. And a, he became more than a father for me. He became like a role model. And he was really my best friend. And so I, like, I learned a lot from him. And uh, especially over the last several years of his life, um, I think we really were working hard to learn as much from each other as we could. And I was really trying to utilize his knowledge as much as I could, um, knowing that he really didn't seem like he was going to be around for a long time. And mm -hmm. so we really began in earnest to really dig in. And, um, and that, you know, a lot of things came from that. Um, mm -hmm. Not only the enrichment of like identity and the strength in myself um, in learning from my father, but um, in the direction of my work, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I began to see um, a, a bigger picture, um, and that means like for me, it was moving away from only trauma-based literature, which was I think there's a place for that, but finding the balance in the work between um, trauma and celebration of culture. And um, I feel like that is something that's equally important to, you know, to talk about community, talk about languages, and to talk about our distinct cultures as Indigenous people, and to, and to celebrate those things, and to talk about more, you know, reclamation of these things, and, and resiliency, and the resurgence of you know, artists, and, and all these really beautiful things that are happening in Canada. You know, th those, if you look at my, my kind of body of work, the last five years of my career have been going in that direction to um, find the balance between the hard things and the celebration of the really good things of, you know, that we have as Indigenous people in, in Canada. It's the intention of the stories that we have and what we want them to do. You know, as Indigenous people, you know, we have a very rich and long history of storytellers in our, in our many cultures. Um, you know, we, we did it orally for a long time. And, but we're also an adaptable people, you know, and so you're seeing that we are telling stories that have the same intention, which is to educate which is to pass down knowledge, which is to, you know, give the gifts of stories that other people can kind of repackage those gifts and, and give them to other people. And, you know, to create like um, knowledge keepers and to create storytellers um, through the stories that we have and how that enriches other people's um, knowledge uh, and the way they see the world and the way they see each other within our communities. And, um, and so, you know, we told stories to, you know, pass down traditions and values and beliefs and mm -hmm. ceremony and, and all these different things. And, and they also had these, um, these um, really um, rich ways to teach people about the way things were and the way things are and the way, thing, way things ought to be. And, um, and we're just doing it in different ways now, you know, we're, we're doing it through, you know, fantasy. We're doing it through like science fiction. We're doing it through dystopian fiction. We're doing it through, you know, supernatural murder mysteries. But um, I, it's not that far removed from what we were doing, what, we, what we've always been doing. And um, I just feel like we're we're finding new ways to do our old thing, you know. And and um, and we're talking about like history and we're talking about contemporary um, things, but. Um, Storytelling is 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 old, and um, so you'll you'll see it done in dance, you'll see it done in literature, you'll see it done in music, you'll see it done in all these different forms of art, um, and the and the intention of publishing, um, I think, is also shifting to realize that, you know, I mean, publishing is a business first of all, mm -hmm. so you know we want to um, recognize, I think, that publishers see the benefit of publishing mm -hmm. Indigenous artists because we, we we're really good at what we do and people want us to buy our stories. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you look at, in Canada at least, the bestseller list from week to week, you know, the, the 
at least half, if not the majority of books, are by indigenous writers. What I really think that is is stories that speak from a place of lived experience. And that's why, like, the things I'm talking about, they're really cross-cultural. Like, you know, you, we need to be reading stories from, you know, the black writers and, you know, the Asian community mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the LGBT community and, you know, the, um, you know, um, the um, Islamic community and like you know all these different communities that make up the diversity of our society and diver the diversity within our communities, they all have stories to tell, and what we can learn from those stories about ourselves and each other, I think is is really important. And so you know I talk a lot from the indigenous perspective because that's my yeah. that's who I am, right? And but I also talk a lot about the importance of reading diverse literature. From, from many marginalized groups because that is, you know, I think who we are. We're a diverse people. I think I, there is a, a perception that I might have had about, you know, what Germany was like, you know, and, and I didn't have really any negative feelings about it. Um, but, you know, one of the things I would hear is that, you know, like oh, in Germany, they have this really romanticized view of indigenous people. So that's what I was expecting. And I think that in a lot of ways, I've seen that a bit. Um, but I've also seen a willingness to learn. Um, and, I, and I think that, like, when, when you only have, like, certain sources of knowledge to teach you certain things, you can't really blame somebody for seeing something in a certain way because there's no other way to learn otherwise. And so I think part of the, I think, motivation is to present those alternatives so that people can learn from a different place. And, and that perception, uh, maybe that romanticization of indigenous peoples um, gradually, you know, is, is uh, removed. And then you can you can replace that with an actual uh, a view of indigenous people that has a basis of truth. And that's what I was talking with like people this week about is like, you know, when you have like, when I, sit, when I say to you, imagine an, an indigenous person and, you know, I, and, you know, kids, adults may, may think automatically of headdresses and, you know, leather pants and, bow and arrows and, you know, these very stereotypical things, um, which I understand, you know, because I don't think there is a, a, a breadth of, in, of uh, indigenous literature by indigenous writers here. And I know that there is a bit of a history of, of learning from, you know, maybe stereotypical stories that are written by non-indigenous people. And so, so that's like, to me, it's like, that never bothers me. It never makes me angry or upset or anything. I just look at it as, okay, like we have some work to do here. So, you know, so let's, but that's, we have work to do in Canada too with stuff like that. So, um, so I, I look at it as just like, let's, let's like work together to start like getting some stories in there and let's talk about it. And, and, um, and so that like for me is, um, what I've seen is that I guess what is different from what I expected is like this, um, this willingness to learn, I think, is really has been really encouraging uh, to see. And um, so we just need to you know, have more stories out there and to, for people to learn more. And eventually, over time, um, then things will change. But time change takes time. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a, it is a marathon, you know. And, and my dad used to say that if you do things in, in, the, in, the, in the right way, change takes generations, you know, and so you have to have patience that the work that you do um, and that maybe that we do collectively is something that you'll see over a long period of time. I mean, a lot of my books, I think, deal with the climate change problem and they, I, I mean, I, I call the last several books in my catalog like land-based books because they are concerned with not just human relationships but the relationship that we have with the land um, and 
I think we have to recognize that, you know, you don't bring anything with you when you're done, you know. You don't, like, when, you, when we're done, like, on this earth, individually, um, I mean, everything that you have accumulated, you leave that behind. So I think people have to think more about what are they leaving behind for other people. And is it more important to leave behind money? Or is it more important to leave behind a healthy environment? Because what can you live off of? And, you know, the, the land and the water, those are the, those are the things that give us life. Without those things, we're in trouble. You know, and, you know, you talked about, like, you know, the, the bees dying off. Well, I mean, when the bees are gone, we're, we're in big trouble, you know. And, um, and when you see the overconsumption of resources affecting the climate of our world, I mean, that's a, a huge red flag. There actually shouldn't be more things we're concerned with than with the environment. Um, and so then what are the solutions? I mean, the solutions to me are learning from people who've done it well over the course of a long period of time. And, you know, indigenous people, I think, are, are people that you can learn from, you know, and people in general can learn from. You know, the way, that, the way in which we live traditionally, um, you know, we, we did waste very little, you know, and we, we only used what we needed. Um, and so my dad used to say, even on the trap line, he grew up on a trap line, which is an area where indigenous people would live on the land and they would support themselves um, through, you know, hunting and fishing and snaring and, and trapping. And, and um, he said that you only took what you needed. You know, if you were hungry, you went out and caught something. You didn't catch many, many things. You caught enough to eat. You know, and so it's, the, it's looking at like the preservation of resources so that we don't overuse what's there for us. And, and then using everything that we can of the resources that we, you know, we, we are given by the land um, so that there's more left over for people who come after us. And if we do that um, more and more, then what we're leaving behind is healthier for the next generation. It's very short-sighted and selfish to, to live in such a way that, um, you know, you, a lot of people have heard say, well, it doesn't matter what happens when I'm gone because I'm gone, you know? Well, I mean, you're one person of, of billions, you know, and the people who come before you are multi, multiple billions of people. And, you know, it, I think it behooves everybody to make sure that you're leaving things behind healthier for the, the coming generations um, because it affects the way that they're able to live and it gives them more work to do uh, and it's unfair you know so uh, you look at like the, the youth today we've given them a burden that they didn't ask for um, and but they're there they have to do something about it and you'll see that like the, the main um, movers, the main change makers in this world are kids. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. 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 Yeah.